How's it going everybody? Adam here. Welcome back to Pokemon Freedom. Today's episode we're going to go over what I did technically yesterday. Which was actually the beginnings of our tech system. Ba -ba -ba. Resume. Back in though. Thank you very much. So I have realized there's a little bit of an issue with the way I've got things set up at the moment. So we have Umbreon here as our player, but he is pretty much just himself. There is no way for me to easily swap in and out. We'll be able to easily swap Pokemon on the fly. So this week, because I've, it's going to be, should be simple, but it's going to be one of those things that's going to be really fiddly if it's not done right. I'm going to be working on getting that functionality set up. Not that we'll be easily be able to test it though, fortunately. So that all that generally entail will be me creating an empty object, calling it player, I suppose. Having all of their default in, like this input manager thing here, that'll have to be sit dragged into there. This script itself needs to be changed. So it's not all one giant thing. And then the Pokemon themselves will just have their type, their little script that they have, the stats and status, and then their little colliders. Anyway, more about that problem. Most likely, hopefully next week will be will be more on that. But this little guy over here, he is our temporary NPC Umbreon, which again has the same, kind of has the same problem as this one. So, inside these guys with a camera target, he's got a little sphere collider, which is acting as like his talk bounds box. So if we or jump in here, I'll go through the code in a second. If we walk up to his little sphere, it's got a toggleable setting. Oh, he does. Meow. Which is require button press. So if I turn that on, walk in, the thing will activate itself. And at the moment I'm using spacebar, which is our jump button, which if it was on the controller, it would have to be A as well. Of course it's had to happen though. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn that button press button press back on. So what he does is, is he kinda while we're in this little sphere he will look at us. Which was all fine and dandy until I decided to hit him in the face. That's fine. So that's all off. Cool. I'd like that to be more if I walk in here, push a button, then he'll turn and look at me. But I just threw that in there quickly to make it look better so I'm not talking to his side of him if I walked in there. Also, our alignment work from last week kind of hasn't worked. It works for this slope perfectly. However, if we walk... Yeah walk up here, it works fine, again, on the 90 degree angles, or the straight angles. As soon as I go this way, he is leaning the wrong way. I said that, didn't realise that until like a couple of minutes ago. So that it's to do with, oh, if I can find it, yeah. It's, I've got it set with our Y rotation. So there's some, a little bit of code in there that I need to, do need to change if I want to keep that in otherwise just have it as setting our forward velocity direction not velocity to go up the hill and he can just oh, I was gonna try and demonstrate that I can't do that that's not how that works but just have his X and Z values just straight and just walk up the hill like that which might it's not looking very good. That's the whole reason I did that in the first place. Doesn't look that good. But at the same time, standing in the hill like this doesn't look right either. So, I'm at a loss for that. Um, added a little functionality. Well, not really. Of attacking. Not that it does anything. Just dying on hit. Uh, that's a matter of using is using tags. So, the orb, it doesn't collide with the ground. 
unfortunately. It just goes straight through the ground. Oh, work on that again. Another thing I just threw in. I really haven't had much time to work on this this week. Um, but it's a simple with him, it's a simple of... I moved... That's why the sphere collider is on the camera target. We have cam tag, so it'll collide with anything that doesn't have this tag. That works. And I've also changed my checking of the alignment script, or part of the script, with the ground only. Because before I was jumping on him, damn it, and I was aligning to his sphere, like he aligns to my face <laughs> when I jump up like that. That's that's why that needs to change. So yeah, the coming down here would fix it if he wasn't pushed up. That's roughly what I worked on. Not a whole lot. I'll just jump into the scripts here for our little dialogue thing. It was a. I'll try and find it. I think I still have it open. Uh, sorry. It was by. Oh. I have to fix that. The. This guy here. Games plus James has a. Uh, tutorial. Three part tutorial on this, so. That was cool, just to get the basics of, of that down, so that was really cool. I had originally tried to do it with a node, uh, was it a node editor? Do I still have the... No, I, I did take it out. I mean, I got, it to wor I got it working again from another tutorial, but I had no idea where to go from afterwards, like setting it up in here. There is... One that you can buy for sixty-five dollars on the asset store, but again, I'd like to kind of create my own things. So, at some point, we will make a proper, or well, I'd say hopefully, make a dialog system that's a lot easier to use. This one's not too bad. It is using text files, and so if I just click on the text manager, this one basically does all the. This does the controlling of the input. Whereas little Umbreon's one here is what sets the manager's one that changes the text script to that. So you can have multiple text files in there together. So this one has one by default, which if we just actually, it's just crappy it's example text. But yeah, so jumping in the cold, again, I'll leave the guy's tutorial down below. Uh, the NPC dialogue was his... I forgot what it was called already. If I have the right one open. No, I don't. Yes, I do. Well, it was his activate line, text at line. And I just found that a little confusing looking between them so I just renamed that however so our text importer script is very very simple that's not even needed it's just creating lag duh I'm going to save okay why are you why 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 apparently my do I have to go control save no control shift save why is it doing? I don't know why it's doing that. Fine, I'll save it the old fashion. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna just close that. Uh, cancel. No, they're mine. They can stay. I don't know what's going on. Bye bye. Text, yeah, text support, which is essentially just getting your text file, which is a text asset, which is, as the guy had said, was just a chunk of text. And as long as that's not null, it'll read the line and split it with the end of line tag. So I plan to sort of create my own uh, text file uh, scripting, not scripting, own way of reading words in the text file. So you see like at symbols, something surrounded by at symbols could be an item or something. or using the 
the stars. Let's go and save it then. Not gonna work. So that'll give me some options. So when reading in here, I'll be able to give different colors to things or and stuff like that. So that'll be nice. That'll be cool. Our text manager. I'll go into next. Goes gets you know needs a game object text box and needs a text. So for us, that's the that's a panel and then a normal text. And I need a, a file for it to read lines for it to go step through. Also going to change this so if we go over here at the moment, it's only showing one line at a time. I'd like it so it'll, you know, can you get multiple lines on there? So that's the thing that I'll again work on. Then current line and line, reference to the player, and then a whole bunch of balls and a float, which annoys me why that's in order like that. Nope. This one let me save. That one lets me save. Text import it does not. All right. Anyway, so then that goes down from the start, obviously getting a reference to the player, again splitting the file up if there is one. But then if the end of the line is zero, we set it to the max length of the file, so you run all the way through it. And if it's active, it'll enable or disable the actual the text boxes and whatnot, which is down here. So yeah, does everything. Uh, in update, just check for if it's active, return, like get out of that, don't need to worry about processing the rest of it. And then getting an input. And since I'm using axes, so not actual get keys, I've got to do a little bit of a longer process or more technical process of trying to work out so that it doesn't skip fl or fly through the text. So get raw returns either a negative one, zero, or one. So, so long as it's not zero, we can go in here, set our axis jump to in use. Then once it's actually, if it is zero, turn it back to false so we can actually continue as looking through the text. But once in here, we have, if we're typing, which is this, to do with this entire enumerator, little offset function, uh, it will go in there, it'll either, can either disable the box if we hit the end of the line or, or we shall start our little coroutine here, which sort of runs on its own. So otherwise if that wasn't happened, you, the game would lag out and you would be waiting for the entire uh, line of text to be printed on screen before being able to do anything else, which is not what you want. So that's why you use a enumerator and can cancel it. So it'll just jump out of that, print the entire thing on the screen and turn everything false again. And that's basically that loop. And also in here, as said before, this basically comes from the NPC dialogue. This uh, gets activated from there. We just get our text to or text lines to the new text file that's brought in from a different game object and saying that our embassy dialogue again some of this stuff is i've added myself so the npc thing here is just for getting us to look at the player that's going to have a lot more code in it i assure you uh, again the text our start and end lines a reference to the manager and then if we want the object to be destroyed so for our require a button press if we were to say have it as a like say we walked into this area actually we do it up here so that makes a little can make a bit more sense so say we had an event up here then when you walked in here, you had someone say, oh, look, help me, help me, I'm in trouble. You could have that happen once, or you could even, yeah, you could have it once. So to good destroy the object, you just get nah and leave. Next time you come up here, you won't have that dialogue. 
all you could do, not the whole get stuck in there sort of thing. Yeah. Back down we go. So that's what that's basically for. Yeah. Get the uh, yeah, press button, waiting for the press, and if our axis is in use, which technically I don't, oh actually no, it, I think it is not really, I don't think it's really needed, but I got it there just, just to be safe, just in case something awry happens, and yeah, get your, get your references, it's pretty self-explanatory, almost going, having a on trigger enter, so that's what the circle speed collider is, getting our player reference, set my NPC talk to true so they look at you, and then if you need button, if you need the button request then that's when you go into update, otherwise you'll just display the text, which is calling the text box manager's reload script here, and then that controls everything else. So that's pretty much the basics of that. That's a very crappy rerun of what Mr. I keep forgetting his name. I apologize. Games plus a James tutorial. So, yeah. But anyway, that's that's that. Um, let's see. Not much else I can go into today without severely running over time. Or, in fact, we need to get this uploaded today too. I seem to have a bad habit of recording this the day it needs to be uploaded. But, so, for the next week... Also, this is a little bit of a problem. If I have the same... Don't look at me. If I have the same Pokemon and I attack, animations play across the same of them, so... I knew that was a problem the moment I implemented that. Yeah, I just need a way to fix it. Because I would have liked that to have, like, sort of baked into animations itself. But there was just some weird problem with it, and I don't know. But again, eventually I'd like to actually have my own actual models for these. Have the you know, oh, wrong way. Have the mouth actually the mouth that actually opens and eyes that you can close and all that manually. That mouse scroll wheel is backwards. I just realised that. Anyway, so next time, hopefully I'll have an update on our little talking system, potentially get attacks, but I don't think that'll happen, attacks working, because that's not our main priority. I wanted to get a text-based system in, because this is meant to be, let's say, like, oop, I fell off the edge, is technically meant to be a story-heavy game. That's, well, not, well, yeah, I suppose technically story-heavy, correct term for it. Um, might even get no, I gotta, I'm gonna be putting too much. Sorry, hit the, hit the headset. Gonna be putting too much on myself if I keep saying I might do this, I might do that. There is no, might. It's, no, that's not. I don't know. But hopefully, for things that I'm liking to get done, pretty sure I mentioned it earlier, and I've already forgotten what that one was. Which is fantastic. <laughs> uh. Probably touch up the, the text system a bit. Uh, maybe the alignment. If I can get that working, that'd be great. But again, it's one, it's a really fiddly thing to do. That was it. There was something else that was. Oh yes, working on getting it so we can actually swap characters relatively easily without breaking everything else. Because as we have a reference to the player. For our tech system, if we swap the player out, that's going to have a problem. We're going to have to be calling multiple different uh, reload functions to get the players a new. To get the new player, we we'll have to call lots of reload functions, and that's not going to be good. And then the same thing's going to go with NPCs. I need to basically have a way to say whether I am the player or they're just an NPC. But anyway guys, that's going to do it for today. Hope you found this interesting. If you did, please feel free to stick around and see some more. And I hope to see you guys next week. But until then, bye.